Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an infinite tower with complex numbers. We have z to the power z to the power z so on and so forth all the way to infinity and beyond. Wait, that was something else to infinity and that is equal to i. Obviously there is some concerns about convergence here and does this converge? Can we find a particular value? Of course, I asked this question to Wolfram Alpha, not the convergence, but like, can we solve this problem? But I kind of tweaked it a little bit. You'll see what that looks like. And of course, if you have any other ideas, let us know in the comment section down below. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos and a number of other problems that I made on this channel. By the way, it's hard to believe, but it's been a little over a year and we got more than 5,000 subscribers, thanks to you. Thanks for working hard and spreading the word and watching the videos. You guys are awesome. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at this problem. We have z to the power of z to the power of z, so on and so forth, right? And it's equal to i. Is it possible to stack up infinitely many z's and then get a finite weight? Is i finite? Well, it's imaginary, so some people think, okay, imaginary because we're just imagining things. but has a lot of applications. So it's probably as real as real numbers, but it's not called real. Okay, so how do you solve such a problem, right? When you have an infinite tower without considering the convergence and all that stuff, and this could turn into something interesting, we're gonna call this something, but wait, it's already equal to i. So the thing that starts with z and just towers up, by the way, this, when I write something like this, this is not z to the z and then raised to the power z. They're not the same thing. Because if I had that, I would probably use parentheses or write it as z to the z squared. Why would I stack it up? And when you have infinitely many of those, it's definitely that. If you had to use parentheses, you would use it like this, indicating that this needs to be done first. Order of operations, conventions, and some symbolism, whatever you call it. Some people find it ambiguous, but most people find this fine, right? Are you one of those? Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look. So we know that this infinite thing, z to the z to the z, so on and so forth, is equal to i. I kind of want to dissect this, not necessarily dissect. Does dissect mean uh, split it up into two pieces? Doesn't necessarily. Just kind of separate this piece from the whole thing and I look at it as a whole, right? When this whole thing is the same thing as the original, so this expression, because an infinite tower of exponents, it actually contains itself. How many times? Infinitely many times, just like infinite fractions. Think about it. When you have something like one plus one over one plus one over dot, 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 when you call this x, this is the same thing as x, sort of, right? In an infinite way. So then you get something like this and you solve for x, but you get a quadratic. Not all solutions are valid you picked out the, the right one, correct? And it's a very famous, well-known number. Did you get it? Hopefully you did. But that's just an example. So this expression contains itself. Okay, did I, have to, did I have to stop at that point? Like, could I not continue a little bit more? And say, okay, I think this is the same thing. I'm gonna call this x, if the whole thing is x, then I get one plus one over, one plus one over x equals x and solve this equation. Sure, you can do that but this one will be a lot easier, so why not go the hard way, right? Well, sometimes mathematicians like to do things the hard way because they want to investigate, okay? Out of curiosity, curiosity killed the cat, but it didn't kill the mathematicians, hopefully. Now, what do we do with this then? We do something similar. The exponent, look at it, like I'm looking at the whole thing as one single exponent. It's the same thing as the original expression, which is equal to, uh-oh, that was the eraser, sorry, which is equal to the original thing, which was i. Cool. It's a huge discovery, isn't it? So now we have a simpler equation, which is z to the i equals i. But wait a minute. Couldn't you just do this? I mean, why did you stop there? You could probably pick this one as the i, and then you would have z to the z to the i equals i. Now here's a million dollar question for you to explore. Do these two equations have the same solution sets? That's kind of for you to find out. If you have some time left towards the end, maybe, if I feel like it, maybe, 
I'll talk about this equation and we can maybe explore a little bit of uh, about this equation. Anyways, let's just continue with this. This one is kind of easy to solve, right? You just write, raise both sides to the power of 1 over i, and you get i to the power of 1 over i. Hmm, that's interesting. What is i to the power of 1 over i? Well, if you multiply the top and the bottom by negative i, which is the conjugate, then you'll get that this is actually negative i. So it's z to the i to the power negative i should be the answer. But what is that equal to? Can we really find a value? Because having an exponent like i doesn't really make much sense. But guess what? We can use exponentials. We can write this in polar form and then kind of clash, multiply, whatever, and you can get an answer. But let's just do it the more formal way because I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you're not doing it the right way. You've got to do it the formal way. I hope this is formal enough for the people. I don't want to say uh, the formal police. You know how we have the grammar police and some people are kind of uh, the rule police or should I say rigor police? Anyways, sorry enough ranting about that so here's what I'm gonna do if you have anything like z to the power w like a complex number to a complex power we can write it as e to the power w ln z and don't forget this is multi-valued right so this is multi-valued because ln z uh, has multiple values make sense so it's not a single value but if you apply it to our problem where w is equal to i we can kind of get uh, what from here, uh, replace z, I mean i with w or w with i. It's going to be e to the power i ln z equals i. Nice. We have e on one side, i on the other side. That's not fair. We need to exponentiate the right hand side or turn it into polar form. And if, as you know, i is going to appear here on the imaginary axis. This is the real one. And as you know, it's a 90 degree rotation, clockwise, counterclockwise, something like that. It's a positive direction. And now it's going to have a pi over 2 radian because of the rotation. And that's the theta and r equals 1, which is the modulus. And you can write any complex number as r e to the i theta. So this becomes i becomes e to the power i times pi over 2. But pi over 2 is only the principal argument because we can add 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi, subtract 2 pi, 2 pi, 2 pi, multiples of 2 pi. That's why I want to include that as well. n is an integer before I forget to say that. And now we have a general solution. What is really cool about it is that we can get rid of the i's. Okay? How? Just cancel them out. Easy, right? Because they both have i in them. Would it matter? I don't think so. From here, we get ln z equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi. And if you natural log both sides, then you should get this. And of course, if e to the power z sub 1 equals e to the power z sub 2, does this not imply that z sub 1 is equal to z sub 2? It should, right? Think about it. Now, we got ln z, but we did not get z, but we're super close. How do we get z? Just exponentiate and write this as e to the power pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, and you get the general solution. If you want a specific solution, replace n with 0, and you'll get the principal value for z, which is e to the power pi over 2. And guess what? This is a real number. Do you want to believe that? It is not, I want to say it's not complex, but it's actually complex too. Anyways, that's a confusion, isn't it? But this seems to be a real number. So if you stack up real numbers infinitely many times, you get an i. Is that possible? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.